implementation of the four terms of compensation adjustments will be applied retroactively from January 1, 2019, once the 2019 general proposal bill is passed. Budget Secretary Benjamin Jokno insists no salary increase will be implemented for government workers until Congress approves the proposed 2019 national budget. The problem is, bigla na lang nilang tinira, sinara, without uh, giving us notice na iparelay sa tao. No? MMDA issues notice of viola violation rather to MRT-7 contractor following its alleged unauthorized excavation works in Quezon City. Akit lang sa kabila, kabila side. Ito. Yan, sumabit sa baka. Sobrang hirap kasi ano, ano natataranta sa ano, pagkawot yun ng lubid. Nakakaskas, napapag ano. Masawad na. And more than 400 Catholic devotees get medical aid from UNTV Rescue and other local paramedics after sustaining injuries during the first hours of procession in Quiapo, Manila. Good evening. More than 400 people have been brought to several medical booths, including UNTV Rescue stationed along the Tres Lachon route in Quiapo, Manila, just a few hours into the procession. Monoxon tells us why. Hundreds of people who were hurt and fell ill get medical aid just several hours after the annual translation in Quiapo, Manila began this morning. The Philippine Red Cross reported in its Twitter account that as of 9 a.m., at least 400 were brought to medical stations along the procession route to get treatment after sustaining abrasions, punctures, and bruises. Others also underwent blood pressure monitoring, while some complained of difficulty in breathing and dizziness. Several people were also rushed to the hospital according to the PRC. The UNTB Rescue First Aid Station, also posted along the Traslacion route, reported that more than 200 Catholic devotees sought its help after experiencing dizziness and loss of consciousness amid hot weather. Main purpose natin, mabigyan sila ng first aid, mabigyan natin sila ng ayuda pagdating sa atensyong medical. Other medical responders reported that most of the injuries they treated were lacerations and puncture wounds after Catholic devotees hustled and walked barefoot on crowded streets. Akit lang sa kabila, kabila ang side na ito. Yan, sumabit sa baka. Sobrang hirap kasi ano, ano natataranta sa ano, pagkawot yun ng lubid. Nakakaskas, napapagano. Masakit, nakaayos lang din naman. Ako pa uwi na rin naman. Kaya pinalinis ko na rin. Uh, nakita ko na lang po, ay eh, nagdurugo na. Kaya yung pagpunta ko rito, naglalakad, may nakita po ako dito. Pabuti, mayroon pong UNTV. Nagpapasalamat po ako sa programa nyo. Uh, Nagasgas lang po sa dami ng tao po. Injured persons are advised to immediately seek medical attention. So, ang isa sa number one na danger nun is yung katulad nung sa ganitong area, uncertain yung, yung tatapakan natin kung meron bang bubog or meron bang barbecue stick or stick na pwedeng uh, makasugat doon sa mga panila. So, isa yun sa mga danger. And then also, yung uh, tetano. Uh, delikado yun, lalo na kung may existing ka na nasugat and then yung tinapakan mo is uh, marumi. No? So, May possibilities na ma makakwar tayo ng mga diseases like yung tetano. The UNTV Rescue Team says it will remain in the area to provide first aid treatment until Thursday morning. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Budget Secretary Benjamin Jokno insists that the fourth tranche of a salary increase for government employees cannot be implemented this January until the Congress approves the proposed 2019 national budget. Jokno's statement comes after House Speaker Rolando Andaya threatened to sue him if the DBM fails to implement the pay hike. Rosalie Cojas tells us why. Budget Secretary Benjamin Jokno countered the statements of House Majority Leader Rolando Andaya Jr. that it is still possible to implement a scheduled salary increase of government workers such as teachers, soldiers and policemen despite the pending approval of the 2019 national budget. Jokno referred to the Executive Order No. 201 Series of 2016 which states that the fourth tranche of the salary standardization can only be implemented through the funds set by Congress. 
He added that once the 2019 General Appropriations Bill is passed, the implementation of the fourth tranche of the compensation will be applied retroactively from January 1. Pending the passage of the 2019 General Appropriations Bill, government employees will continue to receive salaries based or rather indexed to the third tranche of the compensation adjustment. The implementation of the fourth tranche of compensation adjustments will be applied retroactively from January 1, 2019, once the 2019 General Proposals Bill is passed. Okay, so. Jokno clarified that despite the issuance of Congress Resolution No. 3, Series of 2018, which extended the validity of the 2018 national budget, it only covers the capital outlay, maintenance and other operating services, but not the personal services or salaries of state workers. He also refuted Andaya's claims that members of the military have received their salary increase in 2018 even without the funding source from the 2018 General Appropriations Act. Jokno explained that the fund was taken from a reserve miscellaneous personal benefits fund under the personal services of the 2018 national budget. Meanwhile, the Senate is expected to pass the proposed national budget on the third week of this month. The two chambers of Congress will then ratify the bill and will be reviewed by the Office of the President and DBM before the Chief Executive signs it into law. So that thick document We'll have to compare what we sent to Congress and what came out of Congress, line by line. And then uh, we'll have to make a judgment of whether the President will exercise what is called line item veto power. Okay? Line item veto power. He can, uh, the President can actually cross out items that he doesn't agree with and then sign the budget. And that's good as sign, right? Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. President Rodrigo Duterte has signed a law that will strengthen government response to the rising cases of human immunodeficiency virus acquired immune deficiency syndrome or HIV AIDS in the Philippines. Presidential spokesperson Salvador Panelo confirmed in a statement that the president signed the HIV and AIDS Policy Act last December 20, 2018. Panelo called the passage of the law as a timely and relevant because the Philippines has the highest number of cases of HIV in the Asia-Pacific region from 2010 to 2016. Aside from intensifying public awareness on HIV and AIDS, the law also aims to provide the necessary treatment care and support to Filipinos with HIV. The National Meat Inspection Service assures that the Philippines remains free of African swine fever, which currently affects major pig farms in China and other European countries. Here's why from Grace Cassin. The National Meat Inspection Service made the rounds of public markets in Metro Manila on Wednesday. Especially the team visited Pasig City Mega Market to allay fears over the possible entry of highly contagious hog disease that is infesting major pig farms in China and other countries in Europe, the African swine fever. Ang uh, ginagawa po ng National Meat Inspection Service, katu katuwang po ng ating mga lokal na pamahalaan, ay uh, patuloy po nagmamanman dito sa mga palengke para masiguro natin na yung binibenta kari ay safe. The NMIS made certain that pork products available in all markets across the country are safe and free from ASF because 95% of these pork products came from local hog raisers and only 5% are imported. So far, the government has temporarily suspended the importation of pork, especially from countries affected by the ASF outbreak. Stricter measures in meat inspection have also been imposed in several markets such as in Pasig City. Talaga ang mga meat inspections sa amin, araw-araw nag-inspect. Kada madaling araw. Bumababa pa lang ang baboy dito, ang mga meat inspector, andyan na, nakabantay na. Walang nakakalusot sa amin. Nevertheless, the agency still advises the public to be cautious in purchasing pork and pork-based products. Siyempre, malay mo baka mamaya may dalang mga sakit yun. Titingnan ko yung binibili ko kung talagang ano. Kung talagang sariyo ba yun at saka hindi prosen. May bili pa rin pero tinitingnan po yung ano ng baboy. Nagtatanong sa 
dito sa ano, nagtitinda na ni ano ba yung baboy nila safe ba. The NMIS also encourages the public to immediately report to the authorities any irregularities in meat supply or delivery in the area through National Meat Inspection Service contact numbers 02924-7980 and 0917-836-7009. There is no reported human transmission of ASF as of today, but it can speedily spread and cause mass slaughter of hogs and consequently incur huge amount of economic losses according to the Bureau of Animal Industry. Grace Kassin, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority orders the contractor of MRT Line 7 project to pay fines after its excavation work spawned traffic jams along Commonwealth Avenue in Quezon City. Joa Nano tells us why. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority has issued a notice of violation to MRT7 contractor asking them to pay a fine of 25,000 pesos. This was after the EEI Corporation failed to coordinate with authorities before conducting excavation works that occupied two lanes in elliptical road for the construction of MRT7. The construction was supposed to place a tower that will traverse from North Avenue going to Quezon City Circle which is part of the project. This resulted to a traffic gridlock along Commonwealth Avenue that affected many motorists. The problem is, biglaan na lang nilang tinira, sinara, without uh, giving us notice na iparelay sa tao. No? To address traffic woes in the construction area, the MMDA has ordered the project contractor to place yellow markings along elliptical road to prevent vehicles from swerving. Also, all public utility vehicles will only be allowed to use the two other lanes beside the sidewalk. Private vehicles will only be permitted to change lanes if they are about to turn right to Quezon or Visayas Avenue. The MMDA has also ordered to open the U-turn slot among Commonwealth Philcoa from 6 to 9 o'clock in the morning. So I told them to put a right lane markings. At napaglabas ng Commonwealth, kailangan kung nasang lane ka, hindi ka naaalis. Kasi kahit nagkakatraffic dyan yung palipat-lipat, nagkakaroon na sagian, ano? Meanwhile, the contractor has reopened the two inner lanes that was closed in the previous days. They also temporarily halted all construction activities along Elliptical Road North Avenue to cover the road that they have excavated. The contractor has assured in his statement that they will submit to the MMDA's order and fix the construction site. Joan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. DEPED revokes the memorandum ordering school heads to identify teachers. Associated with Alliance of Concerned Teachers or ACTS Teachers Party List. Meanwhile, the department calls on their members to follow due process for requests concerning sensitive or personal information about teachers or school employees. Eileen Cerudo tells us why. The Department of Education or DepEd clarifies they did not receive any request from the Philippine National Police or PNP asking for information on teachers aligned with Alliance of Concerned Teachers or ACTS party list. This was after DepEd Manila Division released a memorandum requesting school heads to provide information of teachers that are members of the said party. We have not received uh, either at the central office or at our region subdivision a request for such uh, information. The department immediately revoked the said memo, saying it does not have enough grounds to become an official document. But during their talks with officials of Axe Teachers Party List, they discovered local PNP units gave requests to two schools whose names were not disclosed. Axe Teachers Party List will file complaints against several officials of the Department of the Interior and Local Government, or DILG, and the PNP for profiling Axe Teachers. Yung mga police na pumupunta sa mga eskwelahan ay may dalang mga memo. Ang direktibo nga ay uh, kunin ang pangalan ng lahat ng mga miyembro ng ACT o ng mga naka-align o kaalyado o uh, kahanay ng ACT. Malinaw din dun sa memo na uh, kaugnay ang paniniktik na ito sa parating na eleksyon. Meanwhile, Teachers Dignity Coalition or TDC condemned the PNP for the said profiling and inventory of ACT teachers. They also criticized DepEd for allegedly allowing the said profiling on teachers. DepEd took action regarding the incident but admitted it was not enough, especially when requests go directly to field units or schools. 
The department also assured they are monitoring all the divisions and will issue a memorandum on the proper process of disclosing sensitive information. We will be issuing a, a reminder or a directive to all our units that for uh, requests, uh, interagency requests that may involve uh, sensitive uh, personal information, then such requests need to be uh, referred to the central office for evaluation uh, whether they meet the standards for uh, data sharing. Eileen Sarudo, UNTV, News and Rescue. Filipino-American singer Alpha says she is more inspired to do more music after her Wish-clusive performance on the Wish Bus USA. Here's Joe Anano to tell us why. U.S.-based singer-songwriter Alpha performs her original titled Fool's Gold on the Wish 107.5 Bus USA. The soothing tune from the indie pop song Stress is a reminder to just be yourself and accept imperfections in life. Spend your life wasting time Believing lies they told you You know, I, I know that Wish is, is a really ver very big deal. It has a great audience. So it's such an honor to just be part of it, first of all, to be a wish exclusive, uh, but then to be the first in the U.S. It's like, represent! Alpha's original song is the first wish exclusive performance featured on the Wish Boss USA, which she says has inspired her to do more and to keep her sharing her music. Falling through. Right, no, yeah, it was funny because I got in there and I was like, I've never done anything like this before where you step into a bus and there's glass on both sides and uh, it's like a professional recording studio. Everything is very top of the line. Alpha says she is pleased to be invited to perform on the iconic FM radio station on wheels that has garnered a huge following worldwide since it was launched in the Philippines four years ago. In September last year, a new Wish 1075 bus rolled in Hollywood, which is considered as the world's entertainment capital. And I actually wrote it because I wanted to remind myself, you know, you're still worth, you're still worth, you're still a worthy person. <laughs> you know, don't have such, a, don't feel so low about yourself. You're still living a meaningful life and you're an important person. The singer-songwriter also expressed amazement over innovations that the Wish FM has pioneered. Oh my should know by now. Um, but for me as a songwriter, it was just like, wow, you chose something that I wrote. It's an original. Um, so for me, that was really encouraging. And, and I think I'm going to take that going forward. And I'm going to use that to just help keep me encouraged to keep writing and keep sharing the music. Aside from Alpha, American country singer Sophie Lean also premiered her wish exclusive video as she performed her song Rooting for You last week. Stay tuned for more wish exclusive performances by local and international singers, which will be broadcasted live from the Wish Boss USA through Wish 1075 YouTube channel. Joan Anu, UNTV News and Rescue. Up next on Y News. Senators Grace Po, Cynthia Villar, Sunny Angara, and Congresswoman Pia Cayetano top the latest senatorial survey of Pulse Asia. Malacanang claims the Duterte administration achieved more in two and a half years compared to the combined terms of former presidents Gloria Arroyo and Noy Noy Aquino. And uh, Camp Junji Marcelo picks last two wish coveries for the semifinals of Wish Covery Season 2, The Singer and the Song. Thank you for keeping me company in the first part of Wine News. More recent behind the stories with Angelo Castro III and William Theo after this quick break. I'm Rina Villamora Camera. Good evening.
Welcome back to Y News. We pick up from Marina Villamar Camara left off. I'm Angelo Diego Castro III and here are the headlines. Okay, parang inabandon na ninyo yung petition na yun by uh, uh, filing your certificate of candidacy for this election. Knowing fully well the consequences, maaring i-dismiss ng SET yung kaso dahil tumatakbo na nga huli ako. GIS exclusive Senatorial Hopeful Attorney Francis Tolentino says he has accepted the fact that his sen electoral protest against Senator Laila de Lima is close to failing. The Philippine National Police is set to file administrative charges against Daraga Mayor Carlwin Baldo over his alleged role in the killing of Congressman Rodel Batocabe. And the tourist raises need for medical facilities in Boracay Island after a traumatic experience. Daraga Albay Mayor Carlwin Baldo is set to face administrative raps over his alleged role in the murder of Acobicol Party List Representative Rodel Batocabe and his security detail, SPO2 Orlando Diaz. The Philippine National Police also wants the mayor to be relieved from office and be placed under preventive suspension. Lea Ilagan tells us why. The Philippine National Police Criminal Investigation and Detection Group is filing an administrative case against Daraga Albay Mayor Calvin Baldo, according to CIDG Director, Police Chief Superintendent Amador Corpus. The case stems from Baldo's alleged violation of standards conduct prejudicial to the best interests of the service for ordering the assassination of Ako Bicol Party List Representative Brudel Batucabe. Also, Baldo is accused of violating the Graft and Corrupt Practices Act for illegal disbursement of public funds for providing 7,000 monthly salary to each of the suspects to make them appear as employees of the City Hall. Our lawyer is coordinating with uh, kung ano pa ang pwedeng, uh, criminal and administrative charges that will be filed with the Ombudsman. The PNP also wants relief of Mayor Baldoff from office and be placed under six-month preventive suspension. Meanwhile, Corpus also confirmed that they have filed charges of double murder and six counts of frustrated murder against the SUV driver Ramon Marbella, who fits the suspects after the crime was executed on the day of the incident. Allegedly, it was Marbella who gave 97,000 pesos to Henry Yuson's live-in partner after the heinous mission was accomplished. Isinama na po sa supplemental po, nakasama po siya as co-conspirator po. And uh, initially kasi po, uh, he was been uh, tagged as per sa witnesses, uh, the statement ng witnesses, na siya yung driver nga ng SUV na nagsumundo tango ito. The CIDG was placed with the approval of the Department of Justice to place Mayor Baldo under its lookout bulletin as well as the leader of the Concepcion Gun for Hire group, Gilbert Concepcion, alias Vic, and his brother Agaton. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue, Cam Krame. The Commission on Elections will order candidates for the removal of big posters and tarpaulin, tarpaulins before the campaign period starts on February. Ayoko Miguel will tell us why. In accordance with the Republic Act 9006 or the Fair Election Act, there are set limitations for candidates in posting campaign ads and even appearance on television and on radio. For example, campaign posters and tarpaulins should not exceed 2 by 3 feet. According to the Commission on Elections or COMELEC, a candidate commits an election offense if he or she will violate the set size and will not abide by the designated common posting area for campaign posters and tarpaulins. This is effective once the campaign period starts on February 12. Right now, uh, you go anywhere, you see big tarps, you big, see big posters, all of which are in violation of at least two provisions of the rules. First, size, because they're larger than two feet by three feet, and location, because they are not located in common poster areas. If at the start of the campaign period these materials remain there, 
then they are obviously in violation. Jimenez also added that a candidate will be directed to remove any and all materials used for campaigning which violate the rules of the poll body. But now that the campaign period has not yet started, candidates and even their supporters are still free to pose any campaign ads, posters and tarpaulins. Meanwhile, an election law expert warns government offices that they are prohibited to campaign for or endorse a candidate. Bawal na bawal yan. Uh, ang lahat ng government officials and employees cannot be engaged in partisan political activities. Hindi naman ako nangangampanye, pero doon sa aking, sa aking uh, may upuan, eh, talaga naandun yung pagkalaki-laki, yung pagbumukha ng, ng kandidatong gusto kong ma-endorse o kaya doon sa mismo computer ko. Halimbawa ay isang nagtatrabaho sa post office, eh sa likod na likod mo, lahat ng bumibili sa'yo ng, ng uh, 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 postage, lahat ng yun, at lahat na nagpapa nagpapahulog ng sulat, eh kitang-kita ka agad yung kandidato mo. So ikaw ay naging inganyo. Be engaged in partisan political activities. Attorney Garcia added that a candidate cannot be held liable of an election offense when a government agency supports him or her. But the government employee who will be proven to be endorsing or campaigning for a candidate will be removed from his or her post. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Senator Grace Poe and several other incumbent lawmakers topped the latest senatorial survey conducted by Pulse Asia, but a political analyst believes that it is too early to say whether these senatorial hopefuls will win in the coming elections and that the real battle will begin during their campaign period. Neil Marie Bohok will tell us why. Pollster Pulse Asia Research Institute released on Wednesday its latest survey on senatorial hopefuls in the upcoming May midterm elections. According to the results of the survey, conducted from December 14 to 21, 2018, Senator Grace Poe remains on top spot with 75.6% of the respondents voting for her in the Senate. She is followed by Senator Cynthia Villar with 66.6% and Senator Sani Angara with 58.5% ranking second and third respectively. Congresswoman Pia Quetano ranked fourth, followed by Lito Lapid and Senators Nancy Binay, Coco Pimentel. On 8th to 16th spots were Serge Osmeña, Bong Revilla, Aimee Marcos, Jingo Estrada, Ronald Bato de la Rosa, Mar Rojas, JVR, Sito and Bam Aquino, while Bongo, Francis Tolentino, Juan Ponce Enrile, Freddy Aguilar, Agnes Escudero, Nere Colmenares, Jiggy Manicad, Willie Ong, Harry Roque, Dong Mangudadatu, and Lorenzo Erintanyada placed between 14th and 31st ranks. 1,800 respondents were asked to choose among the senatorial hopefuls 12 names and rank them according to their preferred candidates if the election was held on the survey period. They were also asked if they have heard or watched any ad about the candidates through shuffle and show cards. Senators Po, Angara, and Aquino have expressed gratitude on the result of the survey. But political analyst Ramon Casible says it is still too early to judge on who among these senatorial aspirants will win in the upcoming elections. Casible notes that the real battle of senatorial hopefuls will begin in the campaign period on February. Campaign na propaganda mo, ano ba yung bilibenta mo sa sarili mo. Alimbawa, kung merong uh, senatorial debate ano? sa, sa mga TV, mayroon na naman lumitaw na gano'n, malaking impact yun. Ha? Yan ang isang proven mm -hmm. na factor sa during the campaign. Makapagbago ng isip yan. Pulse Asia conducted its survey during the time when the Sandigan Bayan convicted Ilocos Norte Representative Imelda Marcos of seven graft charges. Acquitted former Senator Bong Rebilla of plunder in relation with the pork barrel scam, the Congress approved to extend the martial law in Mindanao for another year, and President Duterte greenlighted the economic manager's proposal to implement additional excise taxes on petroleum products this 2019. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Pasay City. Attorney Francis Tolentino leaves it to the Senate Electoral Tribunal and the people to decide on the election protest case he filed against Senator Laila de Lima. Grace Cassin will tell us why. In the program Get It Straight with Daniel Razon, Attorney Francis Tolentino said he is confident he can win the election protest against Senator Laila de Lima with all their evidence on hand. But the process on the case is slow. 
Before filing his certificate of candidacy for senator, Tolentino filed a motion asking the tribunal to suspend the proceedings on his protest. But Tolentino said it does not mean that he acknowledges the supposed victory of the Lima. Ay, parang inabandon na ninyo yung petition na yan by uh, uh, filing your certificate of candidacy for this election. Knowing fully well the consequences, maaring i-dismiss ng SET yung kaso mm -hmm. dahil tumatakbo na nga ho uli ako. Pero ibabalik ko lang po muli doon sa hindi siya nag-file ng counter-protest. So parang tinatanggap mo yung laman ng pleadings ko eh. Kasi hindi mo na kinounter. Meanwhile, Tolentino respects the Commission on Elections despite experiencing election fraud in the 2016 elections. He added that if ever he wins, he will push for the empowerment of local government units, disaster preparedness, transportation sector, and he will also push for federalism. I've been a mayor for several terms, MMDA chair. Hindi po ako nagkakaso sa ombudsman. Kahit isa. Sabihin ba nun, magaling kayo magtago? Hindi naman po. Hindi po. Ibig sabihin, the records will show na kahit sa piskalya, I can have certifications to show. Grace Kasin, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Malacanang insists that President Rodrigo Duterte has more accomplishments in his more than two years in office compared to the Arroyo and Aquino administrations. Rosalie Cost tells us why. In terms of policy reforms and infrastructure projects, the two and a half years of the Duterte administration has achieved more than the combined terms of former presidents Gloria Arroyo and Benigno Aquino III. This is the response of Malacanang to the statement of House Speaker Arroyo that the government must provide tangible results so that the economic gains can improve the lives of the poor Filipinos. Meanwhile, Budget Secretary Benjamin Jokno said there are three things that will attest to the accomplishments of the government under the Duterte administration, economic growth, inflation, and infrastructure projects. He said compared to all the administrations after the Marcos regime, the Duterte administration is the best in his first two years under his term. During the past administrations, the infrastructure spending was only 2% of the gross domestic product but is now more than 6% under the current administration. May we hit the ground running. Because every administration would have maybe uh, one or two years to adjust. Okay? We have hire new people, etc. And so you look at the performance. Growth is number one. Number two is uh, inflation. Pinoy's inflation was much lower, and that is because of the global recession. The third one, of course, which is very important, is infrastructure spending. However, the research group Ebon Foundation said the inflation rate in 2018 was the highest in 10 years' time. The economic growth is also slow, and poorest Filipino families continue to be burdened by the policies of the Duterte administration, such as the tax reform for acceleration and inclusion or train law. Rosa Licoza, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. A tourist raises the need for more medical facilities in Boracay after her daughter fell ill while vacationing on the island. Vincent Arboleda tells us why. A tourist aired her concern over lack of emergency medical facilities on the island of Boracay following a traumatic experience she had from their recent trip there. On her Facebook page, Barbie Chan vented out her disappointment when her daughter had high fever and went into seizure due to a head injury. The incident happened on December 30, 2018. First, my daughter had parang, uh, an accident. Uh, parang nabagsakan siya ng something sa head the night before na nagkaroon siya ng fever. Okay, that's the background. That's why we were panicking when we were there. Kala namin meron siyang concussion. It was around 10 in the evening when they brought her daughter to a private clinic for consultation. Sabi namin, saan ba meron dito? So they were nice enough to bring us nga doon sa AMC. Okay. okay? Dahil yun lang daw yung okay na, na, na clinic. And then I asked, wala pang hospital? Wala nga daw. Nasa kalibo pa daw yung hospital. When they reached the clinic, her daughter was given a sponge bath and medication for the fever so that it would subside and to prevent further seizure, according to the attending physician. 
The said clinic advised Barbie to bring her child to a hospital for proper diagnosis. Due to delays in the processing of requests for air ambulance, the child was airlifted around 12.30 in the afternoon in the following day to a hospital in Manila. Good thing her condition was not serious. But though her child is now recovering, Chan still calls on the government to establish an emergency medical facility in Boracay. We understand that uh, it's an island, yeah. diba? So, syempre, I was really not expecting na primera klase yung equipment at all. Pero for me, as a mother, yung makita mo yung anak mo na tumitirik yung mata and then hindi alam ang gagawin sa clinic na nag, ang sabi nila is the most complete sa island, talagang sobrang magpapatid ka talaga. The medical clinic where Barbie first brought her daughter issued a statement and said they did everything they could to give the child the service she needed. The UNTV News and Rescue Team also tried to reach the management of Siriaco Tirol Hospital, the only public hospital in Boracay, for comments but no one could answer our query. Nevertheless, a staff was kind enough to tour the team around the facility. Siriaco Tirol Hospital holds an infirmary status, a category given to medical facilities with only up to 10 bed capacity, though it can attend to emergency situations. However, the facility is limited and is not equipped for severe cases like when a patient needs complicated surgical procedures or examinations such as an MRI for head injury. The situation calls for the local government of Malay and the provincial government of Baklan as well as the national government to provide and improve the facilities of the hospital. According to Rowan Aguirre, it was in 2014 when the renovation of Siriaco Tirol Hospital began, but to some unidentified reasons, renovation works has not been completed until this year. Eh, yung hospital na yun, yung ginaga ongoing na upgrading yun eh, ano pa yun eh, 2014 pa yun hanggang hindi pa rin tapos. Ayong upgrading dapat tapusin na, uh, as soon as possible, at nang maayos naman. Kasi ang hospital kasi, hindi under sa LGU yun eh. Yung hospital itself that's being run by the province. The island of Boracay is visited by at least 3,000 tourists every day since it was reopened on October 26, 2018. The local government is collecting huge amount of revenue from tourism. According to Barbie, it is but reasonable to establish a state-of-the-art hospital facility in the island not only for arriving tourists but for the residents in the island who deserve government concern and support. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News and Rescue, Boracay. 900 nurses assigned to the Bicol region under the Department of Health's Nurse Deployment Project are yet to receive their salaries for the last two months. In a letter released in December 2018, the DOH Center Development notified the nurses in Bicol that the release of their salaries for the months of November and December will be delayed. The DOH cited in its letter the limited cash allocation from the Department of Budget and Management as a reason why they are facing constraints in budget disbursements. Na nalaman namin na nalit yung kanilang sweldo. We informed them in advance na we had an advisory sa kabus sa lahat ng amin mga NDPs na yung salary na would be delayed. Two more singing hopefuls from Metro Manila will advance to the next round of the Wishcovery Season 2. The singer and the song, Leslie Long Bowen, tells us why. Four Wishcoveries from Team Metro Manila faced off in a fierce vocal battle last night for a chance to continue their journey in the Wishcovery Season 2, The Singer and the Song. First to perform in a one-on-one -on -one vocal showdown were Ira Asuncion and Kiel Aguilar who tried to get the nod of composer Wishcoverer Junji Marcelo by singing his original titled Monumento. <laughs> Monumento, mento, mento, mento. 
The tandem of Alessandra Galvez and Zyrelin Salud also gave their all when they interpreted Junji's Atin Ang Walang Hanggan. Junji has expressed satisfaction on their vocal performances, but he picked Ira and Zyrelin to advance to the next round. Gusto ko lang po talagang i-showcase kung ano po yung talent na meron ako to everybody, to show everybody that God gave me this talent and, and I have to share this to everyone. Nakaka-bless kasi po sobrang unexpected po ng mga pangyayari and I do believe naman po na all things work together for good. You know, malungkot man ako na merong ilalet go, pero hindi ganun kalungkot kasi alam ko may pupuntahan siya. Ira and Zyrelin will be joining Rhea Basco and Alia Cadelina as Camp Junji Marcelo's top picks for the semifinals. Later tonight, Wish Cover composer Top Suzara will scrutinize the performances of the last two groups hailing from the Visayas. Leslie Longboan, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Up next on Y News. Suspicious packages found at consulates in Australia. This is a humanitarian crisis, a crisis of the heart and a crisis of the soul. U.S. President Donald Trump makes a pitch for border wall funding in a televised address. World's biggest tech show opens in Las Vegas with rollable TVs and robots galore. And those are the reasons behind the stories in the second part of our newscast. Why News returns with William Fio. I'm Angelo Castro III. Good evening.